Hello, and today we are going to be talking about how to use breakout rooms in order to manage class flow and how to manage your class effectively. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. In order to get to breakout rooms in Zoom, I'm actually going to scoot this over, um, but if your screen is small like this, you just click on more and you'll see breakout rooms here, but I'm going to make this nice and big so I can see it a little bit easier. All right. So when you go to create breakout rooms, one of the things that I like to do is I always select this third option, almost always select this third option to let my students choose their own room. I think giving students as much choice as possible is really, really important in having an effective classroom and really having students be engaged and taking responsibility for their learning. So I like to let my students choose their room. And that also gives them the ability to move between rooms as they want. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose this. And just as a sample, um, I'll create five different breakout rooms. Okay. When the pandemic hit, my class was virtual for that entire year. And so as a result, all of us were learning how to use Canvas, how to use Zoom. Many of us were learning how to use these tools for the very first time. But one of the things that I discovered that made a huge difference in my classroom was being able to use breakout rooms. Okay, so today I'm gonna to share with you some of the different ways that you can use breakout rooms in your class to help you save time and to help control and manage the flow of your class. One of the ways that you can use breakout rooms is to section out the timeline of your class, of your individual class, and to help your students manage their time. So one of the ways that you can do that is to rename the breakout rooms based on the part of your lesson and then have students move through those different parts of your lesson throughout the day. So for example, when they come in, they'll start in the warm-up room. Then they might go to the lesson room. Then from there, they might go to a formative assign assignment room. Then from there, let's say they have an exit ticket at the end, okay? Um, I always like to include a private room. So this gives my students an opportunity to be able to let me know if they have any private issues that they wanna discuss with me, they know that they can always pop into that private room and I will pop in there and I'll talk with them. So that way we're able to talk privately, no one else is around. Um, and I always let my students know as well that if they see someone in the private room that they are not supposed to go in there. Another room that I also like to add, and actually I'll go ahead and add it now, is an I'm done room, okay? Um, I think that students really like having kind of a start and a finish to their day, and I found that this has been really motivating for them because then they know once they finish all of the assignments for the day, then they're done. And they, that gives them, this room gives them the opportunity to be able to meet with their other classmates, they can relax a little bit, they've done everything that they need to do, and now they can have a break and be in the I'm done room and, and enjoy whatever time is remaining of class. All right, um, so as students go through each of these different parts of your lesson, um, they actually will move from breakout room to breakout room to breakout room to breakout room. And so this is really helpful because it helps them stay on task and it also helps you to know where they are in, in the lesson. Um, so if your students are working independently through different things, you can see how long it's taking them and then you can help the students that maybe it's taking them a little bit too long. Um, another thing that you can do to help with this part is to actually include time frames in here. So let's say that they should be done with the warm up by 10 a.m. I'll put in there 10 a.m. Um, the lesson room. So if they're done with the lesson, so they should, let's say it's the, the lesson portion should take them about 10 or 15 minutes, then I'll put in there, okay, 10, 15 a.m. So by 10, 15 a.m., they should be in this room. Um, formative assignment, same kind of a thing. I can, let's say it should take them 20 minutes to do this assignment. Then I'll say, okay, by, you know, 10.35 a.m., they should be done with this room. Um, so you can include the times in here so that way they're able to keep on track and say, okay, you know, it's right now it's 10.20. I should be finishing with this room and moving into my formative assignment room in a little bit. Um, so adding the times in can be helpful. If you want to, you can add in the times in the beginning, however you prefer. 
Another way that I like to use breakout rooms is not just to control the flow of my class by having different, like dividing my lesson up or dividing my that class period up into different things, but also being able to help my students in scaffolding and chunking assignments. So if we're working on a really, really big assignment that has multiple parts, instead of just giving my students the whole ent entire assignment up front, a lot of times I will break that individual assignment into smaller parts so that they're able to do the individual parts. So let's say that they have uh, an assignment that has three sections. They have a vocabulary part at the beginning, and then they have um, a fill in the blank part in the middle, and then the last part they have to do an essay. Okay, so I can create breakout rooms for each of those parts. And then as my students finish those parts, um, they can either check in with me, or if you're using Canvas quizzes, you can check and make sure that they've completed the Canvas quiz. Um, so that's another really cool feature. So if you haven't seen my video about Canvas quizzes, I'll make sure that I link um, that video in the description of this video so that you can check that out as well. All right, so you can go ahead and link that. Um, and then you just check their assignments and then they can move on to the each of the breakout rooms. This also helps them because then they're able to see as other students are moving through the different parts of the assignment. And then you're able to help students specifically on whatever section of the assignment that they're working on. So if they finish the vocabulary part, they're working on the fill in the blank. Uh, maybe you can see that, you know, almost everyone is in one of these two groups, but there's like two or three students that are still stuck in the vocabulary group. That would be a great time to pop in the vocabulary room and then maybe have a student share their screen and just kind of check in and see what's going on. How can I help you and provide that one on one support? Um, but they're in a safe space because the other students have already finished. They've already moved on. So everyone that's left in this room is all kind of on the same pace. Um, so it definitely helps students with feeling less embarrassed because everyone that's in there is kind of on the same the same the same pace anyway. And they're working on the same thing. So you can help them more strategically. All right, and the third way that I like to use breakout rooms is for separating individual assignments or different days. Um, so I don't know about you, but a lot of times I have students that don't turn in all of their assignments. Um, and so I use breakout rooms to help my students prioritize the assignments that they need to reassess. So usually a couple times a quarter, we'll have a day where all we do is work on reassessing or redoing different assignments so that students can, can improve, they can ask for questions, and they kind of have like a, a free period where they're able to work on the different things that they need to work on. Whether that was that they, they missed a class or um, they got a, a, a bad grade on a particular assignment and they want to reassess it. Um, so our review days are really important for that. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to help them prioritize their assignments on their review days. So I might tell them, you know, you need to look at summative number one. Um, if you have not, you know, when you look at your grades, if you haven't done summative number one yet, that's the assignment that you need to do first. Okay, and then we'll look at formative one that has 20 points. So that one has a lot of points, so then you want to look at that one. Um, and if you've done summative one and formative one, then you can probably look at reassessing formative number two because that one's only 10 points. Okay, so I like to try to help my students be strategic in how they're spending their time and how they're reassessing different things. So this is also really helpful because then it gives me the opportunity to have students choose what they need to work on, what they need to work on most. They're also learning how to prioritize what is most important for their learning or most important for whatever it is that their, their personal goals are. And then all of the students that are in that same breakout room, they're all working on the same assignment, which is really helpful um, because then they're able to help one another. And then of course, if they need me, they just click the ask for help button and I can pop into any of these rooms at any point in time. All right, um, so those are three different ways that I like to use breakout rooms to help me control the flow. So I break up um, my class, my like my actual lesson into the different parts of my lesson. You can also break up an individual assignment into different parts, or you can also use breakout rooms to help students prioritize different assignments that they might need to focus on and use their class time in the way that is most effective for them. All right, I hope that um, some of these suggestions you found were helpful for you, and I'm curious to know how it works out for you using breakout rooms strategically to be able to save time and to manage your classroom time as effectively as possible.
So leave a comment to let me know which strategy you like the best and how you plan to use breakout rooms strategically in your class in the near future. All right, have a wonderful day. And for more tips and tricks, make sure that you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for um, for checking this out. And I'm going to continue sharing other tutorials for you that I hope that you will find helpful and useful in your classrooms. As always, if you have any other specific questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at aharders at proxlearn.com. All right, have a wonderful day. Adios.